Prepare a trial balance from ledger balances of expenses and incomes. Now again, you are given certain expenses and you are given certain incomes. Right? When you put in an expense, we have learned that, it, that an expense has a debit balance. Right? Whereas an income always has a credit balance. This is the normal rule, right? Unless something goes wrong or some situation occurs. Right? So in these cases, whenever you come across any kind of an expense, because it has a debit balance, the balance of that expense is taken to the debit side of the trial balance. And if you have any income, that is taken to the credit side of the trial balance. Right? So the identification that we need to do here is whether this account is an expense account or it is an income account. If it's an expense account, we click the debit balance. If it's an income account, we will click the credit balance. So the first one is purchases. When you make a purchase, do you incur an expense or not? Do you pay cash or not? Right? Yes. Therefore, it's a expense which will have a debit balance. When you make sales, you receive money. It's an income for you. Right? So, it's an income. It will have a credit balance. Similarly, when you make a purchase return, so what happens is, suppose I made some purchases, then I returned some of those goods. So purchase is an expense. What purchase return does is, it reduces this expense, right? So obviously, if this is an expense, a reduction is an expense is kind of an income. It's not an income in literal sense, but because it is reducing an expense, it's a credit balance that you have. Now, please don't go on the numbers. Normally, the purchase has to be higher than the purchase return. But I guess just because of the illustration, it is coming like this. Right? So, let's say, okay, I'll cut this one here. Let it be 20,000 only. Sales return. Now, sales is what? An income. If the sales return happens, the customer returns the good back to us. Then, we will be receiving a lesser amount. Lesser amounts means lesser credit, which can be done by debit. 40,000. Advertisement is again an expense. 20,000. Interest paid on loan. When you pay, that means what? It's an expense for you. Right? Interest received on fixed deposit. Received means what? It's an income for me. Right? So it has to have a credit balance. Income, credit balance. Depreciation. Again, depreciation is what? It's an expense for us, right? What is the entry that you pass for depreciation? You debit the depreciation account and you credit the relevant asset, right? So depreciation has what? A debit balance. So it's an expense. That's how basically you post various expense items. So the only thing you need to keep in mind is whether a particular account is an expense account, in which case it has to have a debit balance, or it's an income account, in which case it has to have a credit balance. Any reduction in an expense. An expense normally have a debit balance. If there's a reduction in accounting, how do we do reduction? By providing the opposite side. So a reduction in expense is a credit balance, while a reduction in an income is a debit balance something like sales return right with this logic you can always try as many number of things the only thing is you should know what a particular account stands for